maybe Galatians. Beginning with chapter 1. May as well start at the beginning. It's really weird. That's where my Bible was turned to. Really? Absolutely. <laughs> that was chapter 3. Yeah. Well, I read the whole thing uh, uh, during the week, but uh, I did, wasn't thinking about it. Uh, among some others, Romans. <laughs> Well, I'll see what we uh, what we uh, what where this leads this morning. <clears throat> Let me read a little bit of the occasion of uh, why this letter has been written. It was written, uh, of course, the Apostle Paul. The, uh, <clears throat> the Apostle Paul had led the Galatians to uh, Jesus Christ. They had made a good start in the Christian life and were doing pretty well spiritually. But later, some Jewish teachers called Judaizers, uh, Judaizers taught the Galatians, that to be saved, one must only believe in Christ, but must also obey the Mosaic law. <clears throat> or let me read that again. Uh, uh, he, uh, Judaizers came and started teaching the Galatians that to be saved, one must not only believe in Christ. I left that out but must also obey the Mosaic law, which was, of course, the sign of uh, circumcision. In preaching this heresy, and that's all it was, and what's a heresy is false doctrine. We need to understand that. And in preaching this false doctrine, they also attacked Paul's apostleship and gospel. Their false gospel had a uh, detrimental effect on the Galatians. It was beginning to hinder the faults who got, uh, let's see, it was beginning to hinder their obedience to the Lord. They were starting to observe some parts of the law, and we can read all about that, uh, and they were considering a complete acceptance of the law. Now, the Apostle Paul at this time, he sought to expose the error of the Judaizers gospel and their impure motives. They even had impure motives then. They wanted to uh, people to pat them on the back and uh, not follow Christ and all of this. Uh, they, they didn't want to serve the Lord and give him the praise, glory, and honor. They wanted to receive it for themselves. Now, <clears throat> Paul's ultimate goal is to prevent the readers from embracing a false gospel and to encourage them to retain or remain, keep their spiritual freedom in Christ. Now, Knowing that, let's, as, let's uh, understand this. Uh, if we lived under the law, we wouldn't have any freedom. We would uh, be carrying it around a whole lot of weight, uh, and, and uh, we would be attempting to do the, the very impossible. And what do I mean by that? Because no person, I don't care who they are, including the Apostle Paul, would be able to keep all of the law uh, all of the time and never make a mistake. It's not possible. And the law cannot save anybody. But the faith in Jesus Christ can, has, will, and does. <clears throat> now, let me finish this up. Uh, <clears throat> All right, the, the Apostle Paul does not want his dear converts to be tied up 
with all of the now abolished rules and regulations of the Mosaic law, which will lead them into legalism. And believe you me, church, there's a whole lot of people that have fallen right into that. Uh, for instance, uh, have you ever or do you know of any churches, for instance, and I'm not here to try to knock down anybody for anything unless, well, I'm still not trying to knock them down. So, uh, but many uh, places of worship, many church houses, many people that are in them, the leaders, they will insist uh, that you fill out a uh, application to come and to join their congregation. Now, we do not do it that way. You have to, they want to look into your history. They want, now I might want something like that uh, if I did not know uh, someone that was, let's say, for uh, instance, uh, going to be teaching uh, the young children. Uh, I might want to know a little bit of something about it. As a matter of fact, I would want to know. You can't just take anybody and put them over children. Uh, because if you did, that could end up being a bad and a sad uh, and a scary situation. Uh, only people that you uh, know to have a good report in God, know to walk with God, know to keep the law of God, and their motives are pure. Uh, it is to be in things like that. But now, many people still today, if you do not fill out an application uh, to join the congregation, you simply cannot join the congregation. And I'll tell you something. When we look at that and uh, really consider that, that is sad. I didn't have to fill out anything to join the congregation of God. Uh, not only did I become... Uh, let's see, uh, go from being alienated from God, which means I was away from God. I came to be uh, not just a servant, but a son of God, a son of the living God. Didn't have to fill out a thing. Had to believe in my heart uh, what God said, the report God said about his word. And uh, once I believe that in my heart and confess this with my mouth unto the Lord God, I became a saved individual, saved from my sins. And uh, God wiped my whole slate clean, and just like he's did yours and everybody else's that's come uh, to know him. But now... Uh, these people, the Galatians, they were getting, after all of that had taken place, Christ had uh, given them freedom of all of these things, and uh, they was getting ready to slip right back into it. Why? Because somebody uh, started listening uh, to the false doctrine, and and where one person will, uh, listened, even if it was only one person, you know there uh, somebody's going to start talking, and then it's going to interest the other people. And while Paul is away, uh, they're going to uh, put down Paul at the same time and say, oh, yeah, now, concerning the apostle, I got things to say about him too, uh, him as well. Now, th uh, do we can we see, according to the word of God, what was trying to take place, there was leaven trying to creep in unto the house of God. And uh, leaven means corruption, uh, pretty much what it means. And the Bible teaches you and I that one, uh, 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 a little bit of leaven will corrupt the whole church if we're not careful. Now, uh, God does not tell you and I to go out and try to fight these people, he, but he does tell us to have no part take with them. Mark the people who are this way, and believe you me, if we were to do that, we could find a lot of this continuing to go on in today's world. But nobody, or I don't know about nobody, but many people don't want to listen. Uh uh, in today's world, before we even get into it, uh, let's see. <clears throat> this, uh, the feature of this letter is justification by God's grace through faith. 
And in chapter 1 and 2, Paul defends his gospel. Now, let's go over to chapter 1 of Galatians. The letter begins uh, letting you and I and every reader know who it comes from. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him, him being Jesus Christ, God the Father who raised him from the dead. Uh, he makes it uh, plain once again. He uh, makes it uh, to where it's extremely understandable. I am not an apostle that, uh, that has been called by men. I am not an apostle uh, that man has uh, taught. I am an apostle that has been called by Jesus Christ. Now, regardless of what our job is, once we come into the kingdom of God, we are uh, one thing. We, have, we are servants of the master. The master, of course, being the Lord, God Almighty, Jesus Christ, you and I being his servants, but we're not just his servants to carry out his work, uh, we are sons and daughters of the Almighty God. <clears throat> Verse 2, now if I need to stop, you got a question or uh, want to uh, have anything to say, just say uh, Brother Millard or excuse me or something like that and we'll stop. I'm in no hurry. Now, verse 2, And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. That explains who he's writing to. He says, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let me stop right there. Uh, every time I read something like this, no matter who it comes from, it always begins, it seems, with grace and then peace. And there's a reason why, because without the grace of God that has been shed upon you and I, we would have no peace in God. It's as simple as that. So grace and uh, be with you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself... For our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Paul says, goes on to say, I marvel, or I am uh, completely astonished that ye uh, are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. I'm astonished at that you are so soon ready to remove yourself from the true gospel and the true freedom of Jesus Christ and getting ready, uh, contemplating, uh, clinging to another gospel. First of all, church, there is a uh, verse 7. Uh, I'll just go ahead and read it. Paul says, which is not another. Now, he's referring to the gospel here. There is no other. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, <clears throat> wanting to turn away, considering, turn it away from the true gospel of Jesus Christ and the grace that comes along with it, getting ready to uh, be led into false doctrine. And it's uh, shaken, uh, it hasn't shaken Paul, but it. Uh, in order to understand this a little better, we need to understand that Paul uh, looks at the people that has been converted under his ministry to the Lord Jesus Christ. He looks at them a lot of times as his children. And he has a, 
uh, sincere uh, prayer uh, in his heart for them. He's always thinking about them. He's always uh, taking them to the Lord, always lifting them up in prayer. He's always have a sincere concern about these people. And when he sees uh, them, uh, somebody coming into the fold and starting to uh, spread lies, rumors, false teaching, Yes, it concerns Paul, and he wants to get involved in it. And remind, notice Paul's not sitting here trying to quarrel or fight with the people that's trying to stir up the uh, noise, try to stir everything up. Uh, but he come in to uh, uh, remind the people of the truth, remind them that uh, he is an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, it would be, this would be your job and my job as well. How many churches do you, do you uh, think, maybe you're aware of one or two or I don't know, but uh, how many churches, if we was to sit and contemplate today, do you think have closed the doors because the devil has been completely allowed to use people to come in and to just rip apart, tear down everything, and uh, the people who are in charge, the overseers, pastors, leaders, how, well, whichever you way you want to call them, uh, they did nothing about it. Well, you ought to know better to listen to that. That's nonsense. And, uh, no, no. <laughs> no, no. We need to explain why. Remind them, put them, Paul, uh, Peter said it real nice, like, put, even though you know this already, we need to put you people in remembrance of these things. Lift them up in prayer. It's like one of the uh, older brothers uh, that has been uh, not older in the... Uh, um, age but older in his faith he can he will choose to eat anything and he's and he doesn't feel condemned he doesn't condemn himself for doing it doesn't uh hold one day above the other and he doesn't condemn himself because he's that way he uh takes every day and gives god thanks for that for those days he holds and esteems all of those days alike and he has the faith. And so he's not uh, doing anything without faith. And he gives God thanks that he's able to do that. He goes on and nothing's, nothing's bothering him. No guilty conscience. However, they could be a weaker brother. And many times there is. Why do you not hold this day above that day? You're doing wrong. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not doing wrong. That's the wrong way to address anything. That's why Paul, Paul already knows this because the uh, uh, a situation that I just explained, Paul also went into that in Corinthians, I believe it was, or it might have been Romans, but I believe it was Corinthians. <coughs> the weaker brother that does not have the faith that what you are doing uh, he could be, and he thanks God at the same time that he doesn't do that, that this other brother's doing. Uh, now, which one is wrong? Neither. In the eyes of God, neither one of them are wrong. Why? Because uh, they, they either do it and give God thanks, they do it to the Lord, or they don't do it and give God thanks. And they don't do it until the Lord. So neither one is doing wrong. But how many people have gotten away from the word of God and the love of uh, the brotherhood, the fellowship, and allowed that to split them up and into, well, we can't no longer walk together. Some people believe once you're saved, you're always saved forever, no matter what you do. Uh, other people or some people, they don't believe uh, nothing of the sort. Uh, I know people of both and I still get along with them uh, because we don't we're never ever going to see everything eye to eye. Somebody will always uh, know a little more than I do. Somebody will always know a little more than I don't care who they are out here. Somebody is always going to know more. 
Now, the whole point of everything before we go any farther is to keep unity in the Lord. God is not two or three groups. He's not two or three people. Uh, God and the Father, they are one. They want to keep unity. And there's only one way to do that. Uh, and that is to walk in the Spirit and be led by the Spirit of God. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to do any of this. Now, uh, okay, verse 7, let me read it again. Which is not another, another what? Gospel. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, but, they, but though we or an angel from heaven. Now, now this is going to be a bold statement. Preach any other gospel unto you than that uh, which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And he's going to say it again. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that you have received, let him be accursed. Now, Paul goes on to uh, say something. He says, for do I persuade men or uh, God? <clears throat> or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of God. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> Paul, if Paul were to persuade men, I'm going to read this to where we can, uh, in other words, seek their favor. That, uh, that's what it's meaning. Or seek to please men by preaching a false gospel they want to hear he would not be the servant of God. And that's what these people are doing. They want the praise for themselves. They want to, uh, you ever hear anybody stand behind the pulpit and say, well, uh, he wants to, uh, he preaches in a manner that uh, just tickles their fancy. I don't want to do that, church. Paul didn't do that. The apostle Peter didn't do that, although Peter had to be uh, withstood uh, to his face from the apostle Paul because of the Gentiles and the uh, Jew, uh, Jews. He didn't know which one he was going to be. He was leading one. Uh, uh, I won't get into all of that, but Paul seen what Peter was doing, and he went over there and said, Look, Peter, if you're going to be a Jew, be a Jew, no matter who's around. No matter who comes and who goes. If you're going to be a Gentile, then be a Gentile. Uh, but you can't pretend to be one because this party comes around and, and then you withdraw yourself and all of that. You're leading the brothers into the wrong way. And so Paul seen that and he withstood. He went over and addressed Peter. He didn't address everybody. He went and addressed Peter. That's why the Bible says, if you have aught with your brother... Go to your brother. But it, or, and if uh, your brother or sister, for that matter, has done wrong, the Lord says, I'm paraphrasing it, if they will not hear you, then, hey, go get one or two witnesses to go with you and try to lead the person back into the right path. But if they continue not to listen, then, hey, bring them before the church and let whatever's going to take place take place because... Uh, that don't mean getting rowdy and fighting and all of that junk. It means uh, uh, stand up for the word of God. If you have done everything you can to make the brother or the sister understand an error, they're in the wrong, they're doing wrong in the eyes of God. And no matter what you've done, no matter who you've taken, uh, they've refused to listen to you. They're all becoming heady and high-minded and all of that good stuff. Uh, don't sit there and argue with them. Bring them before the church. Let the church know what the uh, problem is, what's going on. And hey, uh, just don't have mark mark those people. Don't have any uh, thing to do with them. Why? Because so that they might be ashamed and come back unto the fold. Uh, 
Don't count them as an outcast or anything like that, and I'll tell you why. Because God is able to cause these people to stand. Now, you and I might not be able to, but God can. All right, now, did everybody understand the word, ver uh, uh, the uh, phrase in or the scripture as far as verse 10 goes? No questions so far about anything? All righty. Verse 11, for I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it by man, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now let's look at that for a moment. Uh, that's the way I do things. Paul, when the Lord saved Paul and gave him the name Paul from Saul, Paul did not run to Jerusalem to find out what he should do, what he should say, what he should speak about, how he should go about things. He didn't do that. There was a lot of apostles and other people, including Peter, no doubt in my mind, uh, there already. He could have ran over there and uh I don't know what to do, brother, and I need all kinds of help. God did this, told me this. No, he didn't do that. He didn't go out and seek anything from man. Uh, but all of the stuff that he preached came from Jesus Christ. And that's the way I, that's why uh, uh, I do what I do the way I do it. I want Jesus Christ, I want it to come from the Lord God himself. A lot of things uh, I won't understand until later. I don't understand while I'm reading, uh, but later God will open it up to me. Uh, and that's the way I like it. Uh, when God uh, teaches us something, there's an excellent uh, <clears throat> chance you won't forget it. Now, verse 12, for I knew, oh, I just read that. Uh, verse 13, for you have heard of my conversations in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Now, understand this. Paul did not literally waste the church of God. Nobody can come along and just waste everything God's done. They can waste everything God has done in their own life. And so Paul does not mean that. He See, he tried to destroy it. That's what it means. Yeah, you have heard about me in times past, the kind of person I used to be, and what I used to try uh, to do to the church. Uh, 14 in it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation. And this is why, because he was more exceedingly zealous of traditions of his fathers, my fathers. In other words, he once upon a time when he was, uh, when he was studying the law, he kept that law as to the best he could right down to the letter. And he, and it caused him, uh, listen, uh, let, let me uh, pause for a moment and make this clear. <clears throat> if we're going to try to keep the law, as I said earlier, but I'm going to say it in a different way this time. I could keep the law to the letter to the best of my capability, but do it. And, and if I'm keeping the law, I'm doing things. I'm, uh, uh, let me think, uh, uh, a word that I would want to use. You got to help me out here, Lord. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> works. There you go. I would have works, thank you, God, that uh, I would be doing. And many people are doing the same thing now. But all of the works that I was doing or could do, uh, tr in trying to keep the law would all be in vain. 
You, uh, can somebody tell me why? I'm going to throw a question in now. Can anybody tell me why uh, if I were to work and work and work and all of these deeds that I'm working and performing, they could be excellent works. It could be excellent deeds. I could be helping out everybody and anybody to my uh, best of my capability uh, and uh, keep myself busy almost 24 hours, seven days a week by working and working and working, doing all these marvelous deeds. And in the end, it would not uh, do anything for me. It would have all been in vain. Does anybody know why? Can anybody tell me why? That's right. Because works does not get you and I into heaven. Without faith, uh, just that, uh, let's just do it this way. Without, uh, without uh, the spirit, the body is dead. It's the same with works, is it not? Without uh, uh, works, faith would be dead, but without faith, your works are going to mean nothing. People, uh, ju just like they were then, are doing it now, except more and more and more, trying to work their way into heaven. I'm a good moral person. I belong to a church. I pray every day. I don't make it to church the way I should, but hey, me and the Lord, everything's good. Well, there's something wrong there with that picture. In our mind, we might be good. In our uh, thoughts, everything might be just fine. But if now I could do the same thing, come right up here every Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday evening, when we was having all of that stuff, uh, I could come and uh, teach and preach the way I wanted to. Hey, man. Uh, at least I'm there. I'm there. I'm putting forth the effort. I'm teaching and preaching uh, the way I see it. And, uh, but see, that's no good. I could actually bring leaven, a little, a little bad reputation, a little uh, corruptedness, a little false doctrine into the church, the congregation, which, first of all, by the way, is not my congregation. It's not my church. It's the Lord God's congregation. And the church belongs unto the Lord God. Why? He purchased the people. I didn't purchase you. You didn't purchase me. We have all been purchased. Uh, that's why we can say I have been redeemed, uh, brought back to where God always intended us to be, which is with him, with him. That's where God intended us to be in all, all, from day one. That's why you and I, we don't die. We was created in the image and in the likeness of God. We were not born to die. But when sin come in, there's a penalty for sin, and that penalty is death. Now, there's got to be death to make God be the God that he is. He's just.